In this demonstration, we'll be developing a query-driven email delivery system using integration services. In our scenario, AdventureWorks wants in an automated process for sending defect notices to customers via email and for sending an email notification to the administrator if the number of customer emails exceeds a specified threshold. While this demonstration doesn't apply directly to ETL processes, it does show you how to create an integration services package that uses only the control flow tasks. As part of this demonstration, we'll be using an execute SQL task, a loop container, a send mail task, a script task, precedent constraints with expression, and variables. By the end of this demonstration, you'll see how to put together a variety of tasks in the control flow. Before we start building the package, we'll start by using SQL Server Management Studio to explore the query and test the results so that we can be sure that we're getting the right data into our control flow. So here I have a query, select the top 10 records from the DIM customer table in the AdventureWorks DW2008 database. I'm going to execute this, and you can see we get the 10 records returned. It's always a good idea to start with a subset of data so that you can minimize the number of records that you're working with and just work through the process quickly and efficiently. Then later, when you're sure that you have everything working properly, you can adjust the query to pull out all of the records from your source. Now this table doesn't really have email addresses, but we're going to, for demonstration purposes, construct an email address using the customer's name. So I have another query here where we actually are taking again the top 10 records but we're concatenating the first name of the customer with an arbitrary email address at adventureworks.com and then concatenating the first name and the last name for customer so that we can get two columns returned in our result set one with an email address and one with a customer name. This is the query that we'll be using in our execute SQL task. So I'm going to copy this and place this into my clipboard so that we can copy this later in integration services package. Now let's switch over to BI Development Studio where I'm going to start a new integration services project. So I'll select new project and select Integration Services Project. And I'm going to name the project SSIS. And I'm going to put this into another location. And I'll call the, give this a folder, actually the demos folder, and we'll call the solution BI. And create a directory for that solution. So now with that project template selected, the files necessary for an integration services package will be added to our solution explorer. You can see that there's a an empty package created, package.dtsx, and the package designer also opens here with the package DTSX file, and we can see that there are four tabs, control flow, data flow, event handlers, and package explorer. For this demonstration, we're only going to be working with the control flow. And when you create a package, that will be stored as an XML file, and we have the option to use in Solution Explorer the view code command to view the XML that underlies this package. So we can see that there's a variety of properties and um, not a lot here yet because we just have an empty package, but as we add tasks and configure the properties for those tasks, we would get additional information added to this XML file. 
Now, it is XML file and you can edit it, but it's generally not recommended to do so, that you should just limit your editing activities to the designer. So we're going to go ahead and close this. However, it is helpful sometimes if you get an error message and you're not sure where to find something, it can be helpful to search through the code to find out what task a particular element that's being referred to in an error message. That's a great way to, to find where that's located, but then you should revert back to the designer to make any necessary changes. Unlike RDL files for reporting services, which is an open schema, the schema that's being used for your package files is not an open and published schema. So you want to be careful if you're making any edits at all to that file. The first thing I'm going to do is to rename the package. So I'll right click and select rename. And I'll call this email customers. Notice that I'm preserving the DTSX file extension, which is required for Solution Explorer to recognize this as an integration services package. And we'll rename the package object as well, which is something that changes under the covers in the XML. To work with the control flow, we need to view the objects in the toolbox that we have available. So we'll pin this open. You can see that these are organized in alphabetical order for many of our items that we would be working with. There's also a section for maintenance plan tasks. We won't be using those in our demonstration. So we're going to be focused up here with uh, selected tasks. And the first one that we're going to use is the execute SQL task. So you can either double click or use drag and drop to bring a task into the designer. And then you can double click the task to open up the editor or you can right click and select edit. Now if you do double click you want to be sure that you double click on the icon here so that you're sure to open the editor otherwise um, it will open up the edit for the name of the task which uh, allows you to change the name from something like ex execute SQL task which is pretty generic um, so you just want to make sure that you're clicked in the right place if you're going to do the double click to open up your editor if you don't like to use the double click you can right click and select edit to open up the editor we can also change the name here in the editor, which we'll do, we'll call this Retrieve Customer Emails. And next we need to specify a connection type. The default is OLEDB, which was what we'll be using. But you can see that there are other types, Excel, ODBC, and so forth. And we have no connections created yet in our package, so we can go ahead and create one here on the fly is by clicking in the box and then a little drop down will appear and prompting us to create a new connection and that opens the connection manager configuration we have no connections created so we'll just select new and here we have the connection manager for OLEDB and the default would be the SQL Server native client 10.0 which we use for a connection to our SQL Server 2008 database so for server name I'll put in the name of our server and then I'll use the drop down list to select the database name which will be the AdventureWorks DW2008 we'll click next or click OK and then click OK to close out those connection manager dialog boxes and now a connection has been created for our package and we can see it here in the editor you can also notice that that object has been added to our package as well down below and so now that we've created this connection it's reusable by other tasks as we work through our our package now we're ready to add in the SQL statement that was copied into the clipboard 
So I go to the SQL statement property here, and I can paste it in directly here, or I can click this ellipsis button and open up a larger text box that allows me to paste in and, and see everything in one spot a little more clearly than if I had just pasted into the text box on the editor page. Now you do have options to use the browse button to go find a SQL script that you may have saved out to a file. You can also click the build query button to open up a query builder page and you know use a graphical interface to build out your query. And of course you can always test your query to make sure that it's syntactically correct by using the parse query button here. Now in this case I don't have the bypass per, uh, pair property set to true, so that's not going to work. I mean, I have it set to true, so it's not going to work. So um, this just is a test of the query before we execute. So we know that this is good. So we're done with our configuration of the execute SQL task. We'll click OK, and now we have successfully added a task and configured it, and this is something that we can now execute. So I'll right click on the package and select Execute Package. Now there is also an option to select the Execute Package. There's this green button here to run the package. I prefer to use the Execute Package option in Solution Explorer just as a matter of habit because as you add additional packages to your solution or to your project here there's a validation process that occurs if you use the Run button over here in the toolbar. So with the Execute Package option in Solution Explorer then only the package that I'm currently attempting to execute will be validated. So Integration Services will not let me execute a package if anything in that package fails validation. For example, it will look to see can it connect to this particular connection? Is it a valid connection? And if there's any problems there or something is missing a required property, for example, then it will not attempt to execute the package but will throw an error and force me to address that error before it will do the execution. So again, if I use the toolbar to start execution, it's going to go through a validation of all packages in the project, which could be time consuming if there are a lot of packages and if they're very complex packages. So just as a matter of habit, I always go to the execute package in Solution Explorer. So when we execute a package, it switches into debug mode. And you can tell that because we get a new toolbar and um, it executes very rapidly, in fact, because we just have the single task here, and it turns green, which is good. We have successfully executed this task, and we can also tell that the package completed, six, uh, completed down at the bottom of our designer page. It tells us that we have a link here that we can switch back to design mode, or we can click stop debugging. While you're in uh, debug mode, you can switch over to the progress tab which appears during your debug cycle and you can see the process of the package in terms of the validation completion you can see the start time and the end time you can see queries that are executed um, and as each task executes that would be listed here if there were any warnings or errors they would also be listed here and this information only appears while you're still in debug mode so as soon as you stop debugging that will go away and it's no longer accessible you know, execution results are accessible but if there are any certain types of errors will no longer be visible in this page we switch back to control flow and we see that the green indicator is gone. So even though the the execute SQL task completed successfully, it didn't have any place to put the information, that is the query results. So we're going to need to do some additional changes to our package to be able to use the email addresses and customer information that we just collected.